The Hyundai Santa Fe has long been a popular and well-regarded midsize SUV, but it was quite boring until a few years ago. That changed in 2021, when Hyundai offered the Santa Fe a new grille and an updated interior design. It's not as eye-catching as its smaller sibling, the more angular Hyundai Tucson, but it's a large and appealing crossover that you'll enjoy driving. Today in this video we gonna touch many features of this amazing Korean masterpiece. So be attention and don't waste and skip any second of this review and don't forget to hit like button down below. And now let's find out. Interior The interior of the Santa Fe is relatively roomy, especially in terms of legroom. The available panoramic sunroof reduces headroom in both rows, but the rear seat's ability to recline fully compensate. All controls are well organized and easily accessible, and the most frequently used controls are real buttons and knobs. Hyundai interiors are known more for their robust build quality and useful functions than for their edgy designs and expensive materials. Nonetheless, the Santa Fe boasts an appealing cabin with a number of modern options such as a digital gauge cluster, head-up display, heated rear seats, ventilated front seats, and more. Last year, the Santa Fe underwent minor interior design changes that brought it closer in line with the larger and more luxury Palisade SUV. Its most notable feature is the ample passenger capacity in both roads, which comes in handy on lengthy road journey. The Santa Fe also boasts plenty of baggage room behind the back seat, where we were able to fit 15 carry-on bags and a total of 33 with the rear seats folded flat. The huge door apertures make it simple to enter and exit and both the front and back rows provide plenty of space and legroom. Visibility is also good, thanks to a large back glass and minimal restriction from the rear headrest. The door-mounted side-view mirrors assist you in avoiding blind zones, and the optional surround-view camera system simplifies parking. Technology The optional 10.25 inches screen was installed in my test vehicle. Unfortunately, it was sometimes slow to respond to our inputs, and its graphics aren't particularly appealing. The premium audio system in the Santa Fe offers precise sound and lots of volume, but it isn't as entirely immersive as we'd like. Smartphone connection with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is provided, albeit CarPlay only takes up around two-thirds of the 10.25 inches screen. The wireless charger is a spring-loaded slot that saves space, but also has the potential to swallow lost coins and other small things that are difficult to remove. There are numerous power and USB ports. Hyundai's advanced driver assistance systems are among the best available. The adaptive cruise control and lane keeping assist function flawlessly, relieving the stress of rush hour traffic. Blind spot monitoring and forward collision mitigation also perform well, but some drivers may find them excessively sensitive. Comfort The suspension of the Santa Fe absorbs most bumps and road impact, but the ride might be a little too soft and wallowy at times. However, the front seats are extremely comfortable, with several adjustments in heating and ventilation options. The rear seats are equally comfy and feature plenty of recline adjustment, but we would have preferred thicker padding on the door armrest. Because of the dual-pane front windows and extensive sound depth, the Santa Fe offers outstanding cabin insulation. Wind, traffic, and ambient noise are all kept at bay. The climate controls are simple to use and do an excellent job of keeping cabin temperatures comfortable. Styling New technologies have the potential to inspire new designs. Take, for example, LED headlights. They can be thinner, longer, and curved in a variety of ways than previous halogen units. Hyundai's stylist took use of this with the 2023 Santa Fe SUV, generating a distinct front-end look. The XRT variant has a black grille and several dark components to make it appear rougher and tougher, including false skid plates, but it lacks any extra hardware or ground clearance to inspire off-road excursions. Calligraphy trim goes the other way, with exclusive design 20 inches alloy wheels and a premium dark gray grille finish. Engine The Santa Fe now comes with four powertrain options, including a hybrid and a plug-in hybrid. A 2.5-liter four-cylinder engine with 191 horsepower is standard. Buyers can choose the more powerful turbocharged 2.5-liter engine, which produces 277 horsepower. Both are equipped with an inconspicuous 8-speed automatic transmission and either basic front-wheel drive or optional all-wheel drive. The hybrid variant has a 6-speed automatic transmission, a turbocharged 1.6-liter four-cylinder engine, and two electric motors to provide 226 horsepower, and all-wheel drive is standard. The powertrain of the plug-in hybrid consists of a turbocharged 1.6-liter four-cylinder and an electric motor, which produce 260 horsepower combined. 
The gas fed XRT vehicle with the standard 2.5 liter four cylinder performed poorly on our test track, taking 9.6 seconds to reach 60 mile per hour. If you want a Santa Fe with better acceleration, we recommend the turbocharged model. We obtained a 6.0 second 60 miles per hour speed in our test drive of a loaded calligraphy model with the turbocharged four cylinder. Otherwise, the Santa Fe offers a comfortable and stable ride in everyday situations, as well as just enough agility and steering feedback to satisfy people who enjoy driving. Those seeking a more exciting driving experience in their SUV should pick the Chevy Blazer or Honda Passport. When it comes to towing, the gas-powered Santa Fe can tow up to 35 pounds, while the hybrid and plug-in hybrid can only tow up to 2,000 pounds. Driving, I drove the Santa Fe with the turbocharged 277 horsepower engine. It's rather powerful, and our test vehicle went from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 6.6 seconds, which is faster than most other compact and midsize SUVs. However, unless you require maximum speed, its power delivery is erratic and unrefined. Hyundai appears to have adjusted the 8-speed automatic transmission to shift into its highest speeds as rapidly as possible, which can be annoying. In theory, 191 horsepower from a 2.5-liter engine seems like plenty of power. It's not much in a midsize SUV weighing nearly 2 tons. This engine is appropriate for simple tasks such as a to B and back to A. Anyone traveling further afield or to higher heights, particularly with a family, may pick the turbocharged 281 horsepower option available in the limited and calligraphy variants. Granted, these are the most expensive models, but the gasoline costs will be comparable. Mountain roads are particularly subject to inclement weather, so choose for all-wheel drive, which is fairly priced. The ride quality is calibrated for comfort, yet with a subtle calmness in the background. The Santa Fe leans a considerably through corners, so it's not as planted as a Mazda CX-5. This is an SUV designed for motorway cruising rather than sporty driving. The steering, on the other hand, is nicely adjusted, allowing for effortless low-speed mobility and decent interstate stability. When the 2023 Santa Fe SUV reaches the cell specification level, navigation-based smart cruise control is added. When a curve is approaching, this mechanism adjusts speed accordingly, returning to the preset speed as the road straightens. In addition, Highway Driving Assist provides steering input to keep the Santa Fe in its lane.